Nevertheless, I will tell you why the game plot campaign is full of shit, how Relic desecrates the history of countries alien to them, and why I refer to game script writers as Nazis. I will back up my words with sources and links that will be presented in the video. I must break you. Surprisingly, when the Canadian Relic Studio showed Americans running at machine guns, liberating France, that wasn't their homeland. This was about bravery and heroism. When Soviet soldiers are running towards machine guns, liberating their homeland, this is about cowardice and fear, because their own soldiers were behind their backs, ready to shoot them. Russian soldiers are not going to run without the threat of being killed. Soviet soldiers do not want to liberate their own homeland, nor do they want to take take revenge upon Nazis for killing their loved ones and destroying their hometowns and villages. Well, thank you Canada for the Relic Studio and of course for Justin Bieber. But let's get to the review. Of course the main character is in Gulag. Half of the Soviet people were in prison camps, another half was watching them. As early as in 1976, Solzhenitsyn said in an interview to a foreign TV that the exact number of those repressed added up to 100 million, despite the fact that the population of the country in the year 1939 was 170 million. Mr. Solzhenitsyn probably saw it better from Gulag. It is a custom in prisons that prisoners count each other and they obviously have the right numbers that can obviously be trusted. It's time to meet the main character. His name is Lev Abramovich Isakovich. Just as ridiculous as someone in the States named Abraham Dickwood Shitstein. But I will refer to him as the main character. The main character is visited by the main villain of the game. I need to make this clear now. The plot campaign and video sequences show us that the war is not with the Reich. The war is with the Soviet Union represented by Churkin, an ex-commander of the main character. So this sweet couple decides to warm up the cold cells of Gulag by pleasant memories of the past. That will tell us how the main character ended up here, and what he had written in his diary, like a little girl, and what he did to deserve several death sentences. Of course you have no weapons. When Germany attacked the Soviet Union, the military depots had over 7 million Mosin rifles, with an army of 5 million. We need to take into account that Mosin rifle is not the only ammunition item for the Red Army soldier. We also need to understand that the shortage of arms might have been possible at the start of war, due to Blitzkrieg that left no time for soldiers to get organized. But these were isolated incidents. But obviously, Relic's knowledge of history is better than mine. In the history of pseudo-historical, pseudo-movie enemy at the gates. Owing to the line of uncontrolled fools who were running towards machine guns throughout the entire first mission. This HMG is tearing us apart! Keep advancing, comrades! He cannot stop you all! The Red Army did liberate a square with a fountain, with an unarmed German hiding in it. Bitte, bitte! Gnade zeigen! Bitte! I remember. Those Germans tried to surrender and Poor Nazis who burned the villages and exterminated the people of the Soviet Union. <laughs> we won a glorious victory that day. Glorious? Did the main character play dolls when he was a kid? This is war, people kill each other. And the tougher the enemy, the harder the battle, the more glorious the victory. But as they say... War. War never changes. The second mission tells us about blazing and overwhelming Blitzkrieg. Despite the fact that Stalin sent thousands of soldiers to die. Wait a minute, this phrase sounds weird. I mean, Franklin Roosevelt, Winston Churchill and Adolf Hitler sent their soldiers to die too? This is war! Where else could soldiers be sent? Sent to leave? And I really like the game hints. Well, of course it was only the Soviet doctrine that sacrificed soldiers to achieve its goal. Neither USA nor England, France or Germany did that. And they still don't. I am Colonel Churkin of the NKVD. Major Baradin has been relieved for incompetence and I have assumed command. 
NKVD colonel is the same as police colonel now. Why the hell is he a commander in the army? We no longer have the resources to hold the Germans here. Despite this statement, the player has to wage a full-fledged war with the Germans, stop tanks and armored vehicles, and then, after receiving flamethrowers, burn the houses with the Soviet people inside. With people inside? Are you serious? What kind of Nazis wrote the script? Why would Soviets burn the houses with their own civilians inside? To set up Germany or what? What is the point? And still, why burn the houses? Why not mine the bridges and barricade the roads? Why burn the houses? Wait a minute. I think I know why. I think the game developers are trying to justify themselves. I didn't like their logo from the start. After burning all Soviet civilians around, game creators decide to go further and suggest burning the Soviet soldiers on the field that has been sprayed with gasoline. Despite protests of privates, the NKVD officer orders to burn down the field and the players have to enjoy the screams of the Soviet soldiers burning alive. Torch the fields now! Good job, comrade! In Soviet Russia, evil NKVD, torching people every day. And of course, instead of a normal retreat, game characters have to run from tank muzzles, which were not stopped neither by burning houses nor by the burning field. The Russian soldiers can catch a break because the Soviet Union is the empire of evil that killed both its civilians and its soldiers and did everything to lose the war to Germany and be destroyed, although somehow it managed to win and make the greatest contribution to the defeat at World War II with losses 1.3 to 1. If Relic or anyone here finds any proof of things mentioned in the game, leave them in comments. Many might say, you damned communists, but if Relic showed Germans eating their own children in World War II historical strategy, I would also be outraged. And it wouldn't mean that I am a Nazi. This is simply illogical and distortion of reality. Relic replied to players' discontent over the wrong portrayal of events that those unhappy didn't really play the game. I personally own a license and I want to ask, making a player burn the houses with people inside, burn fields with own soldiers, isn't it enough to understand that this is wrong, especially if it didn't happen in reality? What if the next project by Relic will be the tycoon of the Maidana concentration camp, where the player will need to kill children, women, Jews, Russians, Polish, Ukrainians, Belarusians, Americans, British? Will people also need to buy the game in order to understand that the creation of Relic is disgusting and reminds more of a game created by Goebbels? No, 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 no. The description of the next mission tells us that in 1941 the Soviets used the scorched earth tactics until they reached the capital. This is odd because Relic tells about Blitzkrieg that didn't leave much time for preparation. But it turns out Soviets did have the time to use the scorched earth tactics. Can you make up your mind already? Probably Relic wants to say that during the German advance Soviets had nothing better to do than burn the houses. So the burned cities and villages killed civilians. This is all on the hands of Soviets and not Nazis. Having heard about the scorched earth tactics, Relic decided to show it in Goebbels style. Toasty! But here are some facts, specifically for history experts from Relic. In reality, the order authorized to burn the houses on occupied territory with the help of saboteurs. During retreat, the Soviet people were to be evacuated. During the extermination war, the government needs its people, otherwise the government will be destroyed. The soldiers retreat to Mtsensk. It is October, meaning that harsh winter has come to Russia. And it is so cold and the ice so thick that it can hold tanks. In Soviet Russia in October very cold. After Mtsensk's defense, we learned that these were not the Soviet soldiers who changed the course of war. It was Winter that helped defend Moscow. Guderian's quote is given to back up this statement. He would always put the blame of the German army problems on the size of the country, roads, weather conditions. Of course the Soviets waged war in a different country, with probably better roads and sunny weather. You lie! ...to face the brutal winter to come. But at what cost? You were always willing to sacrifice so many brave men. 
Were their lives really so cheap? This is war, people are dying here, there can't be any other way. And this man walked from Moscow to Berlin and after all those war years, he has still remained a little girl that was drafted. If General Winter helped us at Moscow, it was simply because his hand found more Germans than Russia. I understand that information sources for scriptwriters are limited to their Facebook friends, but are you really serious about General Winter? So, in your understanding, General Winter is sort of a Greek mythology god, and he appears only in Russia. He is also a racist, as his hand prefers Germans to Russians. As a matter of fact, General Winter is more like Sergeant Hartman. There is no racial bigotry here. I do not look down on niggers, kites, wops or greasers. Here you are all equally worthless. Game developers seem to be from Canada, and there are only two disgusting months there. They can play hockey the rest of the time, so why are they using this idiotic cliché? Canada, you did it again. You even found a way to ruin this. Why? Why do we let you be a country? After Mtsangs and the battle near Moscow, the main character is sent to Stalingrad. We learn from the description that the enemy of the Red Army was not only Wehrmacht, but also the Order 227, forbidding soldiers to retreat. So, following the logic of relic scriptwriters, the enemy of the American soldier would be the Uniform Code of Military Justice, specifically the articles on cowardice and desertion. Perhaps the there is no uniform code of military justice in the Canadian army, and Relic thinks it's perfectly normal if a soldier leaves the battlefield without seeing an order. Relic probably isn't aware of the Hitler's plan and his views on the Slavic population, and specifically Soviet Union, nor do they know about a special directive on special jurisdiction in Barbarossa region and on special measures of troops of May 13, 1941, which waived all responsibility for all Wehrmacht soldiers crimes committed on USSR soil. If Stalingrad had been taken by the enemy, the Reich would have isolated Caucasia and got 86% of all oil reserves of the USSR. And then, the USSR losses in the war would have been much greater than 26 million people. But who would have cared for Nazi slaves? It is clear that Relic didn't read the order, nor how it was implemented. In Relic's imagination, blocking detachments in Stalingrad look like this. Fire. And it's not important that it makes more sense to execute cowards before the unit formation. And it's not important that blocking detachments never approached the front so closely. And even if they did, that was because of a lack of soldiers in Stalingrad. And blocking detachments also join battle. And it's not important that during a lack of soldiers, it makes absolutely no sense executing entire squads of its own soldiers. Executions did take place, but before the military formation. If a soldier caused panic and provoked others to run, he would be shot right on the battlefield, but definitely not by a machine gun. There wasn't much of a choice for a country on the verge of extermination. Throughout the war, 158,000 soldiers were shot for desertion. I understand that with 1 million of mobilized soldiers in Canada, 158,000 might seem like a big number, but USSR mobilized over 34 million people throughout the entire war. It means that the number of soldiers shot for living the battlefield is 0.4% from the total number of mobilized soldiers. Perhaps the enemy should save their bullets. Just let us shoot each other. But really, comrades, there is no other option. The only way we're going to survive this day is to advance. We understand, Lieutenant Comrade. We are with you to the end. <laughs> like we have a choice. Dear friend, this was a war of extermination, and the numbers of civil casualties speak for themselves, as well as Wehrmacht directives, so you did have a choice. You can choose Auschwitz, Buchenwald, Maidenek, whatever your heart desires. Seriously, they haven't even gotten into a fight yet, but are already complaining that they can't run away from the enemy. Every hard-fought battle was necessary to teach a lesson, comrade. To show us we could defeat the Germans. And this drove our troops to fight with great determination in Stalingrad. What drove us in Stalingrad was Order 227. 
Let me remind you that Americans fought Germans in Normandy in order to free France that wasn't their homeland. British soldiers bravely fought to liberate the French city Caen. Germans kept fighting fiercely despite their critical state in 1944. In Soviet Union, Russians, Ukrainians and Belarusians do not want to fight the Germans in order to free their motherland, take revenge on their families, friends and their brothers fallen in battle, nor do they want their children to have the future, and it seems that the most important thing at the Eastern Front is 0.4% of deserters and not 99% of soldiers who were fighting bravely for their motherland. Our soldiers had no choice, it was fight or die. And what choice are scriptwriters offering the player? You may choose to fight or choose to go on vacation. This is real bullshit. This is the war of extermination. The enemy invaded your country in order to kill you. What choice are they talking about? It was in Stalingrad when I realized you were losing control of your command. Why? Because I didn't send all my men to die. Because I fought by their side. I honestly don't get it why the main character complains about having to go to war and not staying home quietly. Why is the game called Company of Heroes and not Company of Pussies in the Basement? Company of Pussies in the Basement from Relic. Scriptwriters from Relic are revealing new information, and it turns out that Nazis left Stalingrad because they got a little cold and ran out of supplies. Following the cause of their mentor, master of scriptwriting, Josef Goebbels, they pulled the quote of Marshal Vasilevsky out of context. Reading this quote in the light of Stalingrad events, one might be confused. Of course people want peace, but Nazis did not ask what people wanted. They invaded and started slaughtering the people. Here is the entire quote. It is the Tsar army that Vasilevsky didn't want to fight for. This is 1917 and not 1942. This was another regime and, in essence, a different country. We see that scriptwriters are really good at changing one thing for another, just like their mentor taught them. Toasty! Meanwhile, the main character is risking his life searching for secret files on an enemy territory in order to save the Soviet people. And that was in the mission description. But bad luck and he bumps into a tank and finds himself trapped under the building debris. And of course he says, leave me, because the game must look like a cheap action movie from the past. The next mission orders the player to rush through blind Nazis and get a valuable combat unit, the main character from under debris. It is strange that the enemy still hasn't spotted him. Where have you been, driver? Preventing the capture of a valiant Soviet officer, comrade major. That is no excuse for deserting your post. I want the rest of these soldiers executed in the morning. Dear creators of this game, the next time you fall asleep, listen to the odd and very quiet whisper in the night. This is probably Goebbels applauding to you from hell. In Soviet Russia, we want to lose the war. In reality, if you saved a valuable soldier, took initiative and destroyed enemy ammunition, or captured the enemy, the Soviet Union was rather logical and awarded soldiers with medals. However, imagination of history and logic experts from Relic tells us that soldiers were shot for this. Well, clearly, because Soviets wanted to lose the war, they wanted to lose power and be destroyed. I will not say that building your opinion on such a colossal event based solely on one source is silly. But where did Grossman write anything like that? Did Grossman write about burning houses in 1941 with people inside? Or machine gun execution of Soviet soldiers? Or maybe in an attempt to justify themselves, Relic is trying to pass their writings for Grossman's? Toasty! The only person who didn't get shot is of course the main character. Evil Soviet Union sends him to the hospital, where he meets a good timer, Sergeant Pozharsky. Pozharsky tells him about his battle honors for saving Leningrad, and it motivates the main character to become a writer. And as luck would have it, the Soviet Union reassigns a valuable infantryman, who is worth his weight in gold at the front, to a journalist. What next? Cleaner? Cook? Cashier at McDonald's? You wanted me to inspire the troops with my words, but apart from the bravery of our soldiers, 
I found nothing inspiring about what I saw. What else has to be inspiring during the war? Your friends get killed. You kill others, blood, mud, screams. Are you waiting for an inspiring smile or something? Mama! Smile, comrade. Your bravery is not inspiring. I need your smile. Smile! As a journalist, the main character will walk through Belarus and find himself in Poland. In Poland, the Soviets cooperate with partisans, who help steal an informer in exchange for resources. <laughs> Wait a minute. Why do Nazis have ROA patch on their uniform? Why is the German army entirely made of ROA soldiers? So, according to Relic, Slavonians were fighting Slavonians in the Great Patriotic War. Or Canadians really suck when it comes to uniform. Oh, Canada. <laughs> Our home and native land. <laughs> <laughs> Here is your tongue, Pozharsky. He's ready to talk. Now, where are the supplies you promised us? That are needed in Warsaw. There, my Polish friend. All that you bargain for and more besides. The Red Army knows how to take care of its friends. What in the name of God have you done, Pasharsky? Once the Germans are gone, the Poles would have been fighting us. And we have been at war far too long. Nothing personal. Creators of this game, you are shameless scumbags. Who would start a war with the Soviets after they crushed Germany? At a time when the military industry was booming and soldiers trained by the hardships of war would easily crush another enemy, even outnumbering them. For instance, Japan. Poland has been through Nazi occupation and experienced all the sufferings of war. Why would they start a war with the Soviets? And why 155,000 Polish soldiers take part in Berlin offensive operation? Yes, Soviets did commit crimes. And Poland did, just like any other country. But why are you specifically dwelling on the negative, overlooking what was really important? Why are you showing only the bad things? The game is about heroes, not about scumbags. Why didn't creators of the first part of the game show, for instance, bombing of Dresden by Americans and British? Why not tell about a huge number of civilian casualties, show women and children killed by missile strikes? Why not tell about the crimes committed by Nazis? Why aren't the first part plots built around crimes? Although the second part about Russians, Ukrainians, Belarusians and Polish is centered around crimes. Crimes did take place, like in any other army. But Relic, following the cause of Goebbels, dwells on the petty negative things, missing the big picture. Why not tell about 600,000 of Soviet soldiers who fell in battle for free in Poland? Why not tell about heroic Polish soldiers who contributed to crushing Nazis and also made it to Berlin? And after that, the game creators who cherish history decide to share the truth, the truth that they made up over a lunch break. Partisans. Murder? The people need to hear this. They need your words to inspire them, not fill them with despair. Don't you see how dangerous this is to the war effort? What is dangerous is pretending none of it happened. Those words will not leave this room. You cannot hide the truth forever. Report to Colonel Saitov and the Eight Guards. You're assigning me to a penal battalion? This is a death sentence. Why a death sentence? Yes, soldiers from penal battalions would be sent to harder parts of the front. But a soldier would be sent to a penal battalion for desertion, drinking, stealing and other wrongdoings compromising the soldier's honor. For example, assault on a commanding officer. Any army would punish for breach of orders. The maximum duration of stay in a penal battalion was three months with no ranks. But soldiers would get back to their military units with all their wards, and perhaps with new ones, their rank was restored. And the same question, why doesn't Relic show 98% of soldiers who didn't steal, didn't assault their commanders, and didn't run from the battlefield? The game is called the Company of Heroes! Retreat! <laughs>
In the next mission, Relic tells the player that Soviets were not rushing to Berlin, rather they were ravaging and destroying cities and villages, probably for fun. They don't even know that military law severely punished the crimes committed in other countries, and not because of being good, simply because the army that loses its discipline loses control. It would also mean turning civilians against you, causing guerrillas to fight back and linger the war. Crimes did take place like in any other army, but they were punishable. Discipline is above all. Where is this historical balance? Note that not a single mission tells about the horrors inflicted by Germans on Soviet soil, nor about 14 million Soviet people killed, huge territories razed to the ground, about peaceful civilians deported into slave labor, not even about German bombing of Stalingrad that destroyed 80% of the buildings on the first day. Not a word about it. Although the balance was present in the first part, where neither Americans nor British or Germans committed crimes. In the second part, though, according to the plot campaign, the Soviets did nothing good. So where is the balance? And according to Relic, Soviets were ravaging and destroying nameless cities and villages, despite harsh military laws that provided severe punishment for war crimes. Soviets didn't need Berlin, they'd rather rob and kill. That is why I am opening a Kickstarter project to collect the money for a game about Company of Heroes scriptwriter's parents. In the game you will need to play for a whore mother of the scriptwriter and take quests to get heroin for a scriptwriter's father. And it doesn't matter that it didn't happen in reality, this is just a game. One thing left to do is to find the real names of scriptwriter's parents and take pictures of things around them in order to bring the game closer to reality. But this is just a game, isn't it? It's not meant to hurt anyone. Moreover, it's gonna have a wonderful multiplayer and excellent graphics. Meanwhile, Soviets are capturing Reichstag. Millions died to raise that flag. The irony was that the Reichstag had not been in use since Hitler came to power. All those graves for a photograph. Just think about these words. Millions died to raise that flag. The Reichstag had not been in use as a building. All those graves for a photograph. Will anyone accuse me after that of comparing scriptwriters to Nazis? This is the way Goebbels worked. The Soviet Union, United States, Britain, France and many other countries lost their people, went through tortures and hardships, the Soviet Union suffered the biggest losses, the countries eventually united to defeat Nazism and in the long run it turns out this is all for a photograph. The Soviet Union defeated the main forces of Germany, all those graves for a photograph. Americans are losing soldiers and crushing Japanese in the battle for Iwo Jima. All those graves for a photograph. The capturing of Reichstag was made useless, relying on players' feelings, not their logic. Reichstag was not in use as a building, neither was the building of the Kroll Opera House and many other buildings from Moscow to Berlin, and they were freed not for a photograph, but because there was an armed enemy inside each of them. Scriptwriters probably don't know this, but the war continued even after that day. The Soviet soldiers freed Prague and China and quickly destroyed a million Kwantun army of Japan, and without the use of nuclear bombs. I have a question. Where are the photos for which it was done? Relic has just flung mud at the soldiers of all countries. How are they allowed to make games after that? THQ went bankrupt and left their legacy to Sega. It is said that the great victory and the great tragedy for the entire world was turned into a charade by dwelling on and narrowing the game down to the crimes of the country that suffered the biggest losses. You see so many graves for a photograph. And no nation in the history of battle ever suffered more than the Soviet Union in the Second World War. At least 20 million lost their lives. Countless millions of homes and families were burned or sacked. A third of the nation's territory, including two-thirds of its industrial base, was turned into a wasteland. A loss equivalent to the destruction of this country east of Chicago. They didn't know that they died for a photograph. The main character wrote the story he had just told in his journal, and for that he was sentenced to death. All the men who fought so hard, 
all of their heroism, it's in those pages. Our victory only brought a different tyranny. I made my peace long ago with the truth. You have been found guilty of crimes against the state. The punishment is death. You'd better go now, comrade. Hey, I learned that I was not to survive comrade Stalin's next purge. What's the point? I mean, this is a damn taiga. Where is he going to run with his truth that Turkin asked to bring to the world after shooting an innocent man? This is winter. This is Siberia. The camps are specifically built in places difficult to escape from. The main character didn't even bother trying to hijack a car. She's so stupid. He simply ran on snow into the forest wearing a light jacket. Or is this a prequel to Shining? I mean, Soviet people are not X-Men. Cold injuries will not ask for your nationality. They'll take away your limbs and then your life. But wait, it's not just the logo. It's the name of the studio also. Oh my god, we were so blind! Relic Entertainment demonstrated that the cause of Goebbels lives on. In the light of all this, on behalf of all Russian players, I would like to thank the American studio Tripwire Interactive for the wonderful game Red Orchestra 2 Heroes of Stalingrad. They didn't build their game on Goebbels posters, they simply compiled various sources, visited Volgograd ex Stalingrad and made a historically accurate game depicting the battles on the East Front. Despite a rather relative campaign, the American developer honestly portrayed the events without throwing mud neither at Russians nor at Germans. They showed the spirit that led Wehrmacht and Soviet soldiers into fight and recreated the events that took place in real life. Once again, I would like to thank the developers of this game. Thank you.